So let's answer another question related to cruciferous. Someone wanted to know if it's okay to consume cruciferous because they're concerned about the thyroid and the endocrine system. Is it going to create problems with the thyroid? All right. So there, it is true. There is a chemical called theocyanate okay, in cruciferous vegetables. Not all of them, some of them. And this chemical has the capacity to compete for iodine. So since the thyroid needs iodine as its mineral, uh, the last thing you want to do is have this chemical compete for iodine and end up with a hypothyroid condition, right? But here's the thing. It's not going to happen unless you are iodine deficient in the first place. But if you're doing healthy keto, if you're taking trace minerals or sea kelp, and you even consume a good amount of cruciferous, you're not going to have a problem. In one study, 15 grams of cruciferous per day were consumed. That's five ounces of cooked Brussels sprouts, okay, for four weeks. Absolutely no adverse effects whatsoever. And one more point about that. When I recommend consuming seven to 10 cups of vegetable per day, I'm not talking about seven to 10 cups of cruciferous vegetables per day. That might have been a confusion for some people. I couldn't consume that much Brussels sprout or broccoli or whatever. Uh, I'm talking about like leafy green salads, not even spinach, but just leafy green romaine lettuce or some other lettuce mixture. A couple cups of cruciferous per day would be more in line of what I would recommend. And for a lot of them, you want to steam or saute them or stir fry them. But the benefits of cruciferous are huge. Anti-tumor, anti-cancer, anti-angiogenesis. It's basically a situation where the tumor has these blood vessels supplying its nutrients and cruciferous has the capacity of shutting off the growth of these blood vessels to the tumor, starving them of nutrients. There's nutrient benefits, folate, high vitamin C, high vitamin K1, potassium, selenium, calcium, tons of phytonutrients, lots of chlorophyll, very, very healthy for the body. But I think the biggest benefit is its potential uh, for creating a phase one, phase two detoxification. And that's a situation where it will help boost the breakdown of poisons and chemicals in the body through certain enzymes in the liver. And so you're basically taking these fat-soluble poisons and turning them into harmless water-soluble particles so the body can then rid them, thereby increasing liver function and kidney function. Well, guess what? You need good liver and kidney function to allow the conversion from T3 to T4. So without a healthy liver or a healthy kidney, you're not going to be able to convert these thyroid hormones. And of course, the fiber and the cruciferous could feed the microbes and provide food to increase the bile or recycling. And then the bile is also necessary for this conversion as well. So you can actually improve the thyroid by consuming some cruciferous. And I'm not talking about massive amounts, just some in the diet. And realize when you cook it or ferment it, you decrease some of these chemicals as well. And not to mention cruciferous having the anti-estrogenic effect and high levels of estrogen inhibit thyroid function. So you're really helping the thyroid with cruciferous as long as you have enough iodine. So this is why I recommend the sea kelp, especially if someone uh, is susceptible to having a thyroid problem. Uh, sea kelp is very important. And if you're consuming more cruciferous, just add more sea kelp. All right. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you're liking this content, please subscribe now, and I will actually keep you updated on future videos.